the top stories tonight in Y News. The Department of Foreign Affairs, or DFA, seeks to study if China's water cannon directly hits the Philippine flag, constitutes ground for a filing a diplomatic protest. House Ethics Committee clarifies that there is no politicking in the panel's action on the complaint filed against Davao del Norte 1st District Representative Pantaleon Alvarez. The Department of Agriculture states that there is no reason to implement a price freeze on rice nationwide amid the significant damage caused by the El Nino phenomenon in the agricultural sector. And we will discover why the British police arrested dozens of protesters in southeast London after blocking the transfer of asylum seekers. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Thursday, the 3rd of May, 2024. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media channel. I am Orlin Quijano. in the news. The Department of Foreign Affairs, or DFA, seeks to study the recent water cannon incident by the Chinese Coast Guard that hit the Philippine flag. The investigation will identify if the issue would be considered as a ground to file a protest against China. Dante Amento tells us why. It touches many hearts, especially of the Filipinos after watching how the recent water cannon incident by the Chinese Coast Guard hit the Philippine flag several times. The Philippine Coast Guard or PCG admitted they share the same sentiment. For viewers, ordinaryong tao na makikita na ang bandila natin tinitira ng water cannon, ito talaga napakasakit sa atin bilang Pilipino. The PCG also disclosed that the water cannon was very fatal and even bent the railing of their vessel. Flag ba talaga ang intentionally na tinatarget ng uh, People's Republic of China? Um, well, we can probably say na that would be possible. Hence, the Department of Foreign Affairs or DFA said they will examine whether the incident particularly hitting the Philippine flag with water cannon could be a ground for another diplomatic protest against China. Uh, first, I think we have to uh, investigate. It's difficult to actually already uh, say uh, we, this should be protest, protested. DFA spokesperson Maria Teresita Daza explained they need to gather information from different agencies over the incident. The report becomes a basis for the action that will be taken, whether it will be a protest, a summoning, or what. So we have to rely on the official report. So I'll have to check exactly. The DFA's immediate action after the harassment occurred was to summon the Chinese Embassy of Manila Deputy Chief of Mission on the Philippine vessel while conducting a rotational humanitarian mission in the Panatag Shoal. Dante Amen to UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Philippine Coast Guard or PCG maintains it will not retaliate against China over its attacks and dangerous maneuvers in the West Philippine Sea. This comes after the suggestion for the PCG to also use water cannon against those who are violating the country's sovereign rights and intruding the Philippine territory. National Task Force for the West Philippine Sea spokesperson Jay Tarilla explains President Ferdinand Marcos Jr.'s directive is to not to be provoked by the aggressive actions by China against Philippine vessels in the West Philippine Sea. 
He explains water cannon equipment is for is a standard for PCG vessels to respond to emergencies and not to cause harm against individuals. As far as the Philippine Coast Guard is concerned, um, the guidance of the President is very clear. We should not be provoked of all those bullying activities of China. We're still going to deal with, we deal with them professionally. And if we're going to use our water cannon, ano na lang ang difference natin sa kanila, no? Further, the official emphasizes that they will remain unprovoked unless the task force orders changes or amendments in the conduct of their operations in the West Philippine Sea. Strengthening the country's external defense with new defense equipment was one of the highlights of this year's Balikatan exercises between the Philippines and the United States. In addition, the attention should be focused on China's harassment of the country than the issue related to the Gentlemen's Agreement. Jed Neresina details why. All year round training with different exercises was done by the Philippine Navy according to Commodore Roy Vincent Trinidad, spokesperson on the West Philippine Sea. He said compared to the previous Balikatan exercises, they have now strengthened and increased the capabilities on the external defense of the country. We are increasing our capabilities for external defense. Compared to previous Balikatans, na ang focus was on, let's say, terrorism, internal security operations, HADR. Ngayon, we are now looking at the external environment. Trinidad added that new defense equipments were also added including missiles and artillery that we can use when needed. Apart from this, he said that the issue whether or not there is a gentleman's agreement formed between China and former President Rodrigo Duterte must also be set aside. Commodore Trinidad urged to give more attention on what China is currently doing in our territory. We have to understand the mindset of China, how they operate. All the false narratives that are designed to create dissent within the Philippines, the Philippines, dapat wag natin patulan yan. Trinidad added that we should not forget the real issue where China entered our exclusive economic zone or EEZ and created artificial islands where they also build military installations. Moreover, related to the issue was the water cannon incident that transpired recently. The real issue is what I mentioned, what China has done in our exclusive economic zone. Despite China's increasing harassment, he said we'll continue to act peaceful and responsible in upholding the sovereignty of the country over our exclusive economic zones in line with the directives of President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. Jed Neresina, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The vice chairperson of the House Committee on Ethics and Privileges, also known as Bicol Party List Representative Jill Bongalon, states that there is no politicking in the panel's action on the complaint filed against Davao del Norte's first district representative, Pantaleon Alvarez. The lawmaker reveals that the House Ethics Panel unanimously found the complaint to be sufficient in form and content. Rosalie Cause will tell us why. Yesterday, May 2, the House Committee on Ethics and Privileges began its initial consideration of the complaint filed against Davao del Norte 1st District Representative Pantaleon Alvarez. The committee determined that a complaint should be acted upon as revealed by the Vice Chairperson of the House Committee, Acobicol Partilist Representative Gil Bongalon. So... Uh, this will serve as a reminder no, to us that uh, we have to act appropriately no, in uh, public with respect to our actions, appearances, speeches, because uh, again, uh, freedom of speech is not absolute. So basically, uh, this will serve as a reminder that uh, as public officials, we have to uh, behave properly, no, especially in public. The complaint against Representative Alvarez includes three points. The continued absences of Representative Alvarez from House Committee's hearings and plenary sessions. 
libelous remarks made against co-government officials in Davao del Norte. Seditious remarks Alvarez made during a rally in Tagum City, Davao del Norte, where he called on members of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, or AFP, to withdraw their support from President Marcos Jr. due to the President's handling of the situation in the West Philippine Sea. The complaint was filed by Tagum City Mayor Ray T. Uy. Representative Bongalon clarified that there was no political motivation in their response to the complaint, despite Alvarez being a known ally of former President Rodrigo Duterte. Well, uh, so lang pulinawin that uh, this complaint no, um, started because a case was filed against him. So the Committee on Ethics has to act on the complaint filed. So wala akong politika ko dito. Representative Alvarez, in a message to UNTV News, says he submits himself to the judgment of the House Committee on Ethics. It is not yet certain if the House Committee will be able to resolve the complaint before the CNDA adjournment of the Congress on May 4. Meanwhile, once the lawmaker receives a copy of the complaint against him, he has 10 days to respond. After the committee receives his response, they can discuss and deliberate on the merits of the case. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Philippine National Police confirms a police officer lost his life follow following a gunfight with a suspect who was seen carrying a firearm. PNP Public Information Office Chief Police Colonel Jean Fajardo said Police Captain Roland Moralde, a member of the Regional Mobile Force Battalion in Police Regional Office, Bangsamoro Autonomous Region, confronted suspect Mohidin Ramalan Untal, who was carrying a short firearm on his waist at the public market in Barangay Poblacion 2, Parang Maguindanao del Norte. The confrontation escalated into a deadly exchange of gunfire, resulting in the death of the suspect. Colonel Fajardo reveals that aside from Untal, five other individuals, including two policemen, were captured on CCTV, firing at the police victim. All suspects are relatives of Untal. Well, yun po yung lumalabas po na dahil po uh, nagkabakilan nga po itong si Captain Moralde at yung uh, kanya pong sinita ay, uh, ay uh, nakita po nilang uh, bumagsak at nabakil nga po itong kaanak nila. It appears na yun po yung motibo na parang uh, nagretaliate po sila doon kay Captain Moralde at uh, nagresulta nga po sa pagkakamatay po ni Captain Moralde. The two policemen have surrendered along with their firearms, but authorities are still pursuing the three remaining civilians who managed to flee the scene. Colonel Fajardo emphasizes that murder charges are being prepared against the suspects, and the two policemen are not exempt from administrative consequences. Furthermore, the PNP is investigating why the other policeman accompanying Captain Morolde failed to respond properly to the incident. Turkish Trade Ministry announced on Thursday, May 2nd, that they will stop all trade with Israel, including all exports and imports. In April, Turkey began to implement trade restrictions on Israel due to their refusal to permit Ankara's participation in Gaza aid airdrop missions. In the midst of the escalating conflict between Israel and Palestine, Turkey cited the worsening humanitarian tragedy in Palestinian territories as the reason for the complete halt in trade. Last year, the two countries had a total trade volume of $6.8 billion. Currently, Turkey is committed to rigorously and decisively enforcing these new measures until the Israeli government permits an uninterrupted and sufficient delivery of humanitarian aid to Gaza.
and we'll share more global stories with you later. But for now, back to you. For those watching our live streaming on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. A number of traditional jeepneys were sold as junk in Manila as the government pushes for public utility vehicle modernization program. JP Nunez will tell us why. Many operators are selling their traditional jeepneys in junkyard in Manila. According to an owner, they are receiving at least 10 jeepneys a day on the average back when the government announced a deadline in December 2023. Jeepneys are either not roadworthy anymore or it failed to catch the deadline of franchise consolidation. Marami, minsan, sa akin, sampu, araw -araw, hindi na bababa. Most of them are still running and being used as public utility vehicle on the road. Earlier this afternoon, May 3, three traditional jeepneys were junked in Manila as it failed to catch the deadline last April 30. Kaysa naman kunin ng LT, RB, LTO, ganun, yung mga nagpapatupad dahil ano na talaga, hindi na tinanggap, wala nang, hindi na nakarehistro yan. Kung ba kulurum, mas malaki pa ang multa, Kukunin, kulang pa yung jeep nila sa multa. They are buying the units up to 40,000 pesos if the engine is in good condition and 20,000 pesos if the unit is dilapidated. In an interview, Department of Transportation under Secretary Andy Ortega said the agency will buy the old jeepneys who failed to catch the consolidation for a higher price than the junkyards. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Amid the significant damage caused by the El Nino phenomenon in the agricultural sector, the Department of Agriculture has yet to see a reason to implement a price freeze on rice nationwide. Nel Maribohok tells us why. There is no need yet to declare a state of emergency nationwide to control the price of rice. According to Department of Agriculture Assistant Secretary Arnel de Mesa, imposing a price freeze may cause problems in areas not affected by the El Nino. At kanya-kanya, yung mga apektadong lugar na to ay nagkaroon na ng declaration ng state of uh, emergency. So kung idadama yung uh, buong bansa na na hindi naman apektado ng El Nino, baka magkaroon ng problema doon sa ibang area. Currently, according to DA officials, there is no shortage of rice supply in the country. The target harvest for this year is 20.48 million metric tons of palay. According to ASIC de Mesa, there is still a buffer stock of 300,000 metric tons that can be harvested during the rainy season. In addition, there were 1.6 million metric tons of rice imported in April. The Department of Agriculture also supports the proposed review of the rice tarification law and the return of authority to the National Food Authority to sell affordable rice. Importante kasi na magkaroon din ng intervention, uh, lalo na kung talagang masyadong mahal. Under Section 10 ng Price Act ay kayang gawin yun, hindi ng NFA kung hindi ng kagawaran. According to the latest data from the El Nino Task Force, 131 areas have already declared a state of calamity due to the El Nino. Most of the severely affected areas are from the Mindanao region. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And in other global news. The Federal Reserve of the United States announced that there will be no changes to the current interest rates on loans in the country. This decision reflects the Federal Reserve's commitment to maintaining the current size of interest on loans in the nation. According to Greg McBride, Chief Financial Analyst of Bankrate.com, the possibility of even a 6% reduction in interest rates this year is completely fantasy land. He advised consumers to prioritize debt repayments, especially high-cost credit card debt, as high interest rates are expected to persist. 
the federal funds rate set by the U.S. Central Bank determines the rate at which banks can borrow and lend money overnight. However, the rate offered to consumers by, by banks may differ. Meanwhile, the inflation rate continues to rise, while the only increase seen in wages is reaching 0.6% in the past year. Asylum transfer protest. Dozens of protesters arrested in London for blocking the transfer of asylum seekers. Mary Jo Malariado tells us why. 45 people were arrested by British police during a protest outside a Peckham Hotel in South East London on Thursday, May 2. London's Metropolitan Police reported an attempt to stop a bus loaded with asylum seekers from leaving by deflating its tire and constructing the vehicle by surrounding it. The protest saw a number of police officers had been assaulted. Though none were seriously hurt, the police were forced to take decisive action due to the assaults and obstruction of police and also the roads. The bus was destined for the BB Stockholm Barge, currently docked at Portland Port in Dorset. The barge can house up to 500 men, however, it has been criticized to be inhuman and comparable to a prison ship. But according to Home Secretary James Cleverly, accommodating asylum seekers in hotels while their claims are being processed costs British taxpayers millions of pounds every day. Cleverly added to his post on the social media platform X that the protest will not deter the government from doing what is right for the British public. Addressing the illegal migration issue is one of British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's top priorities and the use of barges and former military sites is currently one of the ways this is being tackled. Just this Wednesday, official data revealed the arrival of 711 migrants via small boats, the highest number for a single day in eight months. Mary Jo Malariado, TV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Thousands of railway workers at Canadian National Railway, or CN, and Canadian Pacific Kansas City, or CPKC, have reached an agreement to conduct a protest action on May 22nd due to months-long disagreements over rest provisions crucial for their safety at work. The railway industry plays a significant role in Canada's economy due to the exports of commodities such as wheat, potash, and carbon. Contracts for railway workers at CN and CPKC expired on December 31, 2023. Out of the total workforce of 9,300 employees, three groups of workers voted with over 95% in favor of authorizing the protest action. Despite six months of negotiations, no progress has been made. The companies have been attempting to remove rest provisions vital for worker safety, leading to the impasse and the decision to protest. The potential strike by railway workers is expected to disrupt bulk grain shipping, according to the Western Grain Elevator Association. There is no prepared plan B as there are no competitive alternatives to CN and CPKC. The government is concerned about the possible effects of the strike on the supply chain and urges negotiations between workers and companies with good intentions to resolve the issue. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. The SSS pension protectors have put an end to their fourth losing streak in the UNTV Volleyball League Season 2. Meanwhile, the BFP Lady Firefighters have notched their fourth consecutive victory. And atop the standings, the PNP Lady Patrollers clinched a win in yesterday's match, solidifying their position. JP Nunez reports.
morale ng team nila despite the losses because they have... In a fierce showdown on the volleyball court, the rookie teams, SSS Pension Protectors and Comelec Suffragettes displayed unwavering determination in their first game, lasting an intense five sets. Ultimately, the SSS Pension Protectors emerge victorious, triumphing over the Comelec Suprajets with a score of 3 sets to 2 at the UNTV Volleyball League Season 2 held at Paco Arena in Manila yesterday. The match concluded with a scoreline of 21 to 25, 25 to 23, 25 to 23, 13 to 25, and 16 to 14. The standout performer of the game was the Thai import of the pension protectors, Pachari Saingwang, who unleashed 34 attacks, 3 blocks, and 4 service aces, earning her the title of best player of the game. Currently, the pension protectors hold the 6th spot with 2 wins and 4 losses, while the suffragettes sit at 4th place with 4 wins and 3 losses. We talaga namin sila, lalo na yung kaluwete nila at si Abil. Buti eh, nag-workout naman yung pinraktis namin. Talagang pinaganda kasi nag-losing streak na kami. So kailangan talaga, mas win na talaga lahat ng games namin. So binibigay na namin talaga yung best. Talagang todo na. So, sobra pa sa best. Nawala kami sa depesa yung mga maliliit na bagay na katsat. Kinakatsap-katsat lang, hindi namin makuha ng maayos. So ayun, kailangan namin tuunan ng pansin yun. Okay, let's set it up. In the second game, the BFP Lady Firefighters celebrated a convincing victory over the DFA emissaries, sweeping them aside in three sweeping them aside in three straight sets with scores of 25 to 17, 25 to 16, and 25 to 17. Fanny Adolpo was named the best player of the game for her outstanding performance, recording 11 attacks and 5 service aces. The emissaries now find themselves in 8th place with no wins and 6 losses. Um, sa ngayon, overjoyed. Talaga ang saya namin. Kasi talagang um, in-instill namin sa mga players na talagang dapat tapusin namin yung first round na maayos. Talagang, and alam namin, tinrabaho talaga eh. Talagang Nag-triple effort kami, nag-triple sipag kami. Talagang, talagang ibinuhos ng mga players na talagang lalaruin nila yung dapat laruin nila. Uh, assessment sa akin parang okay lang naman din. Kasi biggest ano, adjustment yan sa lahat ng players, sa lahat ng team na pagka nawalan ka ng setter, tapos bigla ka mag-a-adjust, eh, talagang sobrang hirap. Pero nakita ko naman, okay naman kahit pa paano, eh, nai-execute nila yung mga movement na kailangan. In the third game, the PNP Lady Patrollers emerged triumphant against the Judiciary Justice Servers, clinching victory in three consecutive sets and securing the top spot with six wins and one loss. The match concluded with a score of 25 to 12, 25 to 11, and 25 to 20, with Cesc Oliveros being awarded the best player of the game for her contribution of 13 attacks and one service ace. The Justice Servers currently hold the seventh spot with two wins and five losses. Binigyan namin kasi nung iba yung pagkakatao na ma-show up yung ability nila sa court. Ang teamwork nila, makikita ko andun pa rin yung teamwork bawat isa. Tuloy lang kami sa, ano, sa insayo, uh, game plan, uh, yung mga uh, error namin na ano, pag-aralan namin yung kung paano namin ma-maintain yung mga ano namin sa court, yung mga sa ano ng mga player ko. Tuloy-tuloy lang namin sa pag-insayo. Uh, Patuloy may game plan na kami, ha, mag, magiging duble card kami sa pag-insayo para ma-perfect namin yung mga games. Maraming elements na kailangan tignan. No? At least ngayon medyo mas gumaganda-ganda yung, yung depensa. Uh, and then yung consistency ng game. Yun ang isang medyo um, kailangan bigyan mas, namin mas malaking focus doon. And then uh, siguro yung iba medyo mahabol na doon sa, sa opensa.
Meanwhile, stay tuned for the upcoming matches in the League of Public Servants at Win in Sports, Win for Charity. On Sunday, May 5, 2024, at Paco Arena in Manila, the DFA Emissaries will face off against the SSS Pension Protectors in the first game at noon. This will be followed by the AFP Lady Gunner versus Senate Lady Defenders match at 2 p.m. You can catch the action live on the social media account of UNTV News and Rescue and UNTV Sports. JP Nunez, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. As the world faces these trying times amid the various challenges and uncertainties, we are inviting everyone to join the Global Prayer for Humanity. Good day. I'm Brother Eli Soriano of the members of the Church of God International. I want to invite you to join us in a minute of prayer every day to pray for humanity and the whole world as we go through these perilous times. While safety measures like washing of hands and strengthening of our immune systems may help us through this horrible predicament, there is still no precaution or cure more powerful than God's mighty intervention and we need his intervention now more than ever it doesn't matter what religion you are in or what denomination you belong this is an invitation for all the people around the world who cares for the future of their family friends loved ones and humanity as a whole everybody is welcome to pray with us for more details, you can check out the description box below. Thank you very much and I hope to hear from you soon. May God bless you. Before we close, we will leave you with the word, giving glory to God. From the book of Genesis, chapter 15, verse 6, it says, And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. And those are the reasons behind the news Friday, May 3rd, 2024. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am Orlin Quijano, live from Toronto, Canada. We serve the people, we give glory to God. For viewers, ordinaryong tao na makikita na ang bandila natin, tinitira ng water cannon, ito talaga napakasakit sa atin bilang Pilipino. Flag ba talaga ang intentionally na tinatarget ng uh, People's Republic of China? Um, well, we can probably say na that would be possible. Uh, first, I think we have to uh, investigate. It's difficult to actually already uh, say uh, we, this should be protest, protested. The report becomes a basis for the action that will be taken, whether it will be a protest, a summoning, or what. So we have to rely on the official report. So I'll have to check exactly. As far as the Philippine Coast Guard is concerned, uh, the guidance of the president is very clear. We should not be provoked of all those bullying activities of China. We're still going to deal with, we deal with them professionally. And if we're going to use our water cannon, ano na lang ang difference natin sa kanila? No? We are increasing our capabilities for external defense. Compared to previous Balikatans, na ang focus was on, let's say, terrorism, internal security operations, HADR. Ngayon, we are now looking at the external environment. We have to understand the mindset of China, how they operate. 
all the false narratives that are designed to create dissent within the Philippines, the Philippines, dapat wag natin patulan yan. Well, basically, yesterday we had the initial uh, consideration of the complaint, and uh, the result is that the uh, committee uh, unanimously found that the complaint is sufficient in form and content. Well, uh, ko lang po linawin that uh, this complaint no um, started because a case was filed against him. So the committee on ethics has to act on the complaint filed. So wala akong politika ho dito. Marami, minsan sa akin, sampu araw-araw, hindi na bababa. Oo, oh, umaandar naman talaga lahat yan. Umaandar lahat yan. Kaysa naman kunin ng LTRB, LTO, ganun. Yung mga nagpapatupad dahil ano na talaga. Hindi na tinanggap, wala nang, hindi na nakarehistro yan. Kung ba kulurum, mas malaki pa ang multa. Kukunin, kulang pa yung jeep nila sa multa eh. At kanya-kanya, yung mga apektadong lugar na to ay nagkaroon na ng declaration ng state of uh, emergency. So kung idadama yung uh, buong bansa na, na hindi naman apektado ng El Nino, baka magkaroon ng problema doon sa ibang El Nino. Importante kasi na magkaroon din ng intervention, uh, lalo na kung talagang masyadong mahal. Under Section 10 ng Price Act ay kayang gawin yun, hindi ng NFA kung hindi ng kagawaran. Pinagensayuhan talaga namin sila, lalo na yung paluwetin nila at si Abil. Buti, nag-workout naman yung pinraktis namin. No? Talagang pinaganda kasi, nag-losing streak na kami. So kailangan talaga, mas twin na talaga lahat ng games namin. So, binibigay na namin talaga yung best. Talagang todo na. So, sobra pa sa best. Ang tingin ko dyan, yung depensa namin. Kasi minsan, nawawala pa rin sila. Service received, yun pa rin. Mga basic pa rin. Yun yung, 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 yung mahalaga talaga eh. Basic, basic positioning, basic na service receive, basic na set. Kasi sa atake, wala na mga masyadong problem. And congrats sa atin, uh, pinsayo pa tayo mabuti. Oh, na-observe ko ano talaga, siyempre yung willingness ng, ng, ng team ko sino talaga yung gusto manalo. Um, nawala kami sa depesa, yung mga maliliit na bagay na katsat, kinakatsap-katsat lang, hindi namin makuha ng maayos. So ayun, kailangan namin tuunan ng pansin yun, papapunta ng second round. Uh, may ang pagputihin nila ulit kasi safe pa rin naman kung sino na kalaban namin na first round, naaral naman namin. So pagdating ng second round, magiging maayos na yan. Um, so ngayon...